Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. Tropical Storm Debbie is inching up the East Coast, which gives people in North Carolina a little bit more time to prep before the storm is expected to arrive in the Triangle. Debbie's expected to drop up to 10 inches of rain on the region. Now the National Weather Service is warning of extreme flooding risks. WREL meteorologist Brian Schrader was with us earlier this week tracking Debbie. He's back for the latest on the storm and more tips on how to prepare. Brian, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Jack. I should note to our listeners first, uh, we're recording this on Tuesday evening. Yeah. Uh, for up-to-the-moment forecasts, go to WREL.com or tune into WREL News Plus. Brian, first, just give us a quick update. How's Debbie? Well, <laughs> Debbie is <laughs> a couple of trends with Debbie today. Uh, it looks like the track is going to be a little farther to the west, which does have implications for our area. Uh, as opposed to tracking over eastern North Carolina, it looks like the center of What's left of Debbie by Friday morning is going to be just to the west of the triangle. Also, it looks like it's going to be a little faster as it moves across the triangle. So it's very slow right now as we record this and will remain slow through the day tomorrow. But as we head into Thursday, into Friday, as it heads to the north closer to the triangle area, it's going to pick up in that forward speed, which is good news because it means that we're going to see at least a little less rain. But still, we're talking about up to 10 inches inches of rain. That's right. Yeah, the National Weather Service is predicting up to 10 inches mm-hmm. for some parts of the viewing area. That's after a pretty soggy few weeks. Uh, they're warning of extreme flooding risks. How is that different from other flood warnings? The, there's a part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, of which the National Weather Service is part, uh, called the Weather Prediction Center. And every day they look at the country and they issue a forecast for what they call an excessive rainfall outlook. And it's designed to measure the potential for flash flooding events. And it's sort of like those severe weather days that you hear us talk about with level one, two, three, and so forth. We are going to be in the highest level on Thursday, which is uh, high uh, in their terminology. We call it extreme on the air here at WRL, but, uh, and we don't get that very often. They only issue those high risk days, 4% of days across the country. But on those days, that accounts for 40% of flood related deaths. So these are high impact days. You really have to take them seriously. The last one that we had in our area was 2019 when Hurricane Dorian came through. So we are expecting flash flooding here on Thursday. Now, WREL has reporters all over the state right now. What are we hearing from them? It has uh, certainly been wet down along the coast. There's been some street flooding uh, through the afternoon. We got some viewer video of that in New Bern. We had specific reports of some uh, standing water in Brunswick County in the Leland area. Uh, but we haven't seen any big problems just yet with water rescues or anything like that. We anticipate that's going to change, especially as we head through the day on Wednesday. Now, we have had some tornadoes here as well. How does that figure in? Well, th- that's part of that westward shift that... I was talking about it kind of raises our risk of seeing some tornadoes, especially on Thursday. Uh, These tropical systems, the tornadoes that they spawn typically are brief and, again, relatively speaking, weak as tornadoes go. But we had one that hit the Charleston, South Carolina area uh, on Tuesday, early Tuesday morning, did a lot of damage. Uh, We can't rule that out Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon especially. I think that the greatest risks are going to be south and east of the triangle, but I would not be surprised if those risks start to look a a little greater for the triangle area, especially as we head into Thursday. My sort of approach to that, because these things spin up so quickly, often they develop and dissipate in between radar scans, so we never get a chance to warn for them, is when you're in one of those heavier rain bands that we're likely going to see, I just kind of move to the center of the house. Just get away from the windows. You don't need to go get in the basement or get in the bathtub or anything, but just kind of be in a safer spot. Uh, So with that jog to the west, we do have to pay a little more attention to tornadoes in the Triangle area. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear more about how you can prepare for Debbie as it makes its way up the coast towards the Triangle. Stick around. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. We're talking with WREL meteorologist Brian Schrader about the storm system that's moving up the East Coast. Brian, there are lots of newcomers to the Triangle. For many, this is their first hurricane season, and I'm sure they'd like to know from a veteran such as yourself, what is in the Brian Schrader Hurricane Prep Kit? 
What are the must-haves? Are there any creature comforts? You need to think about this in two ways. Am I going to stay at home or am I going to go to a shelter? I think most people are going to stay at home, so let's focus on that. First thing is you need to put it in a good container. Maybe a big trash bag or a trash can, but five-gallon buckets work as well. It needs to be watertight. Uh, I always, like the first thing, the most important thing is a battery-powered radio. Your lights could go out for a couple of weeks. You know, if you were here in 1996 with Hurricane Fran, we went through two weeks of power outages. Um, we're not anticipating that with Debbie, let me make that clear. But for this storm, for the ice storm in the wintertime, for, uh, you know, the attack on the substation that happened in Moore County, you know, having a battery-powered radio was your connection to the world. So a battery-powered radio with plenty of extra batteries. If you have a child, a baby, make sure you have the baby supplies. You need essential medications for yourself. Make sure you have all that in an an easy-to-get-to place. Some extra cash. They may not be able to take credit cards. Um, An extra set of house keys, car keys, that kind of everyday stuff. Your drink bottles, a great thing to have to fill up with drinking water. You need to have a gallon per person per day. Uh, A first aid kit and a book. If you don't know first aid, so that you can refer to something quickly if you need to. Your pet food, a leash, a carrier, a manual can opener, um, ready-to-eat snacks, things that are uh, not perishable, uh, sanitary items, soap, laundry detergent, extra set of towels, sturdy shoes. This is something that's important because if you're if you're in a situation with a lot of yard debris outside, you could have boards with nails, exposed nails, walking around barefoot or in flip-flops, it's not going to cut it. And games and toys and books to entertain yourself or your children for those uh, days potentially without electricity. That You need to think about it in terms of at least a three-day kit for the house. But a lot of people want a two-week buffer there before they get the electricity back on and life back in order. Now, what about the house? Yeah. Uh, w- one of the things that we've talked about leading up to this storm was keeping the storm gutters clear outside. So if you live in, in a neighborhood and you've got a bunch of junk covering up the storm gutter, clear it out. Uh, that'll help to protect against flooding. Your gutters and your house need to be cleaned as well. Um when you talk about wind, a lot of people put plywood up, especially at the coast. We don't do that as much here. And with Debbie, we're not anticipating any big problems with high winds. But when eventually we will get a storm where we, where we are concerned about that, one thing that you can do now ahead of the next storm is to take a good video or picture inventory of the valuables in your home so that if you have to file an insurance claim, you got that stuff in order. If the power goes out, uh, what can I expect? You talked about making sure that you have cash on hand. Am I going to be able to get groceries? Put me there. What what does that look like? When you're talking about widespread power outages, uh, you can't count on anything to be working. You really are on your own. So go into the gas pump. It it is not necessarily going to work. Very often, uh, all the grocery stores are going to be closed. Convenience stores are going to be closed. In emergency management circles, they have that Waffle House index. Have you heard of this? Mm-hmm. Where uh, it's kind of a proxy for how badly damaged the infrastructure is if the Waffle House locations are closed. Uh, so you really are on your own. And I think that we have seen in recent history that you really have to be in control of your own destiny in these things. You can't count on somebody else to come and help you out. Now, lots of people rely on generators when the power goes out. Do you have any safety tips with that? Uh, you know, and I think that this is probably something that is is more common in the winter. Obviously, you don't want a generator that is burning gas in the house. Uh, and that's and because carbon monoxide. Exactly. Carbon so monoxide yeah. ha- kills people every time we have an ice storm, it seems. Somebody is trying to keep the house warm, and they either have a generator in the house or they bring a, a grill in the house to try to keep keep the house warm. We don't really see that as much with hurricanes, but um, you you do need to kind of step back, assess what am I doing with this generator as you as you move forward. I'm guessing the likelihood of something so uh, severe like you just described is mm-hmm. probably not going to happen this not time. Not with this one, yeah. But, you know, it could happen in what we expect to be a very busy hurricane season. 
Exactly. And I, I think a lot of people, again, if you're new to this area, you think about a hurricane as a coastal thing. And most of the time it is. But inland, we certainly can see a lot of problems with wind. Um, and when you have the ground as saturated as it is from all of this rain that we've seen in July, and now we've got another 10 inches this week, it doesn't take much to knock over trees and take out electricity. Well, Brian, thanks. These are all great tips, and I know you're going to keep us updated in the days ahead. Absolutely. That's WREL meteorologist Brian Schrader. For the latest on Tropical Storm Debbie, go to WREL.com or tune in to WREL News Plus. I'm Jack Hagel. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for listening to the WREL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WREL News is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email with triangle news, events, and headlines to help you get ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com newsletter.